Hi there, this is Elise starting out the new year of my How to Get No Feedback from Elise vlog. Um, I've talked a lot over the last year and a bit about theme and um, characters and plot and storyline and a lot of the mechanics of um, sort of getting, getting yourself together on what it is you want to write about. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit today about once you once you think you've got a, a good solid outline that that um, that accomplishes all of the things that you want to do, that um, the next step would be to write the rough draft of the book. Um, now here at New Musicals the Inc, we are pretty strong proponents of the idea of writing a rough draft of the book without thinking about songs at all. Write it almost as if it's a play. Um, now, there are many, many different ways to do this. I'm not saying this is the only way to do it. I'm saying that it's a really good way to try, and it, you might check it out to see how it works for you and your team. The reason we advocate it is because um, the, this rough draft is really intended to simply accomplish your outline. So you've done all your hard work trying to figure out exactly what you want your show to be about and what characters are going to tell that story and what the strongest choices and decisions are for them, and you've written that out, theoretically, in an outline that is uh, very clear. Now, uh, your rough draft really just needs to accomplish that outline in words. Uh, the purpose of that, uh, the main reason for doing that, is because it that rough draft then becomes a blueprint for your collaborative team to use when they move on to song spotting. And now they could, you could do that from an outline, it's true, and I'm sure you've got lots of ideas for songs already based on your outline. But the reason I would recommend waiting for this one more step is because once a book writer starts to accomplish the scenes, accomplish the outline by writing, um, by, by just writing the rough draft, the, um, the, the book writer is going to begin to explore the language of the characters. And that language is going to give um, a, an amazing amount of information to the lyricist and the composer uh, about what would be, not only what would be good places for songs and good ideas for songs, but also what some of the diction would be, song title possibilities, and the way the characters start to talk. This is a really important step. For this reason, a rough draft um, can, can certainly be overwritten. You should not um, rein yourself in and feel like uh, it has to be a certain number of pages. You should um, uh, you should feel free to overwrite, understanding that the, that these words won't ever see the light of day in actors' mouths on a stage. That's not what this is intended for. So you shouldn't feel like you have to uh, make it actor-proof or audience-ready. Uh, what it is is an exploration. Accomplish the outline. In other words, each scene needs to accomplish what your outline said it would in terms of the plot. And and use this opportunity to develop the characters and the character diction. And sometimes that means really overwriting to sort of explore how and look for that character's voice. Um, I'll do another vlog later talking specifically about character diction. Um, and I'm going to start a series next um, next up, I believe, about, um, about the work of a scene itself. But um, the important important thing is to just accomplish the outline and not think about songs at this point. Um, and I'll, I'll, try to, I'll try to give you a few other reasons why you should do that. Um, partly because um, you want to be exploring the language and let the lyricists and the composers use the, the diction that you start to create for your characters. And um, partly because as you write the scenes, it will become very clear uh, where the dramatic, most dramatic moments are, um, which will become an, an incredibly useful tool when the team sits down to a song spot to say, okay, so where in this scene, as accomplished, as, you know, as we've accomplished this scene from the outline into the rough draft, what are the high points? Who has the highest stakes? Uh, who has the most to gain or lose? And therefore, where could these songs go? So, so don't think of this as um, as a play. Don't think of this as the first draft of your musical. Think of this as a a draft with dialogue that your team is going to use as a blueprint. Once it's done, your entire collaborative team should get together to read it together and, and start to discuss song possibilities. That's what this is for. It's a tool for song spotting. Uh, you can skip it if you like, but I would strongly recommend that this is an incredibly valuable tool. And don't, uh, this is the most important thing to me, don't just reach a point in the scene where you say in a stage direction and then they sing a big group number and move right on, assuming that that, that you already have the idea in your head of what that's going to be and you're, you move right past it. Use this as an opportunity to write out the story of what that song might be. Um, the lyricist and composer can then use that as, as um, 
as at least a possible blueprint for the for the development of the song, for the progression, for the plotting of the song. Uh, this is this is this is important, book writers. This is where you can start to have a lot of sway. Um, some book writers feel like sometimes it's hard to get someone to be a book writer for a musical because they feel like um, it's a lesser task. They get shunted to off to the side. Nobody pays attention to them. The lyricist and the composer steals all their best material. This may be true, but you can be um, a, 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 an incredible um, source of inspiration and you can be very controlling about where you think songs should be and what you think they should be about. So if you just write down and then they sing a ballad about how much they love each other or and then there's a big group number with dance possibilities, you are abdicating that responsibility to your lyricist and composer. And I think as a book writer you really should feel the right and the privilege uh, to, uh, to do a lot more than that. To, um, to try to steer things. You might not get what you want at the end of the day. Uh, in, in a collaborative song spotting se session, a different song might come up that's just as good and your team might go in a different direction. But this is your opportunity to have some influence. So write out the story that you'd like a, uh, to be in a song. And you know, knowing that yes, it might get converted to a song later, but you have provided the idea, you provided the shape, and you provided some of the diction and, and the actual you know, lyric ideas in your writing. Um, if you reach a point where you honestly feel like there should be a ballad, where somebody's discussing their inner thoughts, write a big freaking monologue that would never see the stage because you don't tend to see big, long spoken monologues in a musical. But you are providing the fodder, the inspiration, the tools for your collaborative team to write a great song. So don't abdicate that. Don't, don't pass it off. Write your rough draft accomplish your outline and assert some control and some and some ideas about how you think uh, how, areas where you think there might be songs or what ground you think should be covered and discover the voices of your characters that's what you're going to be doing in your rough draft so um, best of luck uh, heading off to do that and um, more next month <laughs>